How you doing? Long time no see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happened to the last uh, God knows how many years. Yeah, you disappeared off the planet for as far as we're all concerned. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we are. Ended up just disappearing, really. <laughs> Run away. Run away and got uh, got sucked into so many other things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, first things first. Happy birthday. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. I turned the big fifty on Friday. Yeah. So, which stage of grief are you at? <laughs> well, it's all right. I think uh, the thing the thing is is I've got uh, I've got my brother who's a, a year older, and my wife is a couple of years older than me. So they've sort of prepared the uh, prepared the the passage of uh, fifty. So it's not been too bad, really. <laughs> Sounds like denial then. <laughs> yeah, pretty maybe. <laughs> no, no. no I, I, yeah, it's true. I don't feel fifty. I, I, well. Right, I'll, right. Uh, I probably yeah. feel better now than some 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 points in the past. Uh, you know, like I don't know. Yeah. Even when I had problems with my knee and everything, I had, I had an operation on the knee about three years ago, three or four years ago. Oh right. Uh, probably felt worse then. <laughs> oh right, you're okay now though. Yeah, yeah, fine, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'll do a bit of an intro. Um, so, yeah, the reason, uh, well, I was, I, I'd sort of come across you on Facebook not too long ago. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, although we just friended, but we didn't get really in, in touch with each other again. Um, mm. So this Big Bang film has come out with the first female, UK female ascent by Emma Twyford um, yeah. of your route. Um, and we've both had a chance to watch that last night as well now. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what did you think of it? Oh, I mean, it brought back so many memories because uh, it, 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 it is strange that I've, I've, I've really been out of the scene. I've, I've not done that much climbing really over the last 20 years since I came to France. And uh, I don't really follow what goes on as well now. Um, every now and then I, hit, I yeah, have, a, have a browse, look, look through the websites. And uh, still in touch with Alan Leary, and he he kept on letting me know when James McCaffrey repeated it. Okay, and yeah. When Emma as, uh, as well repeated it. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was good to see see the video as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that was mainly sort of well, it's beautifully shot as well, but it was mainly about her sort of her personal journey. Did, did it have echoes with you as well in terms of uh, the ringer you yeah. through? Yeah. I mean, um, I forget now. I mean, it just seems like uh you know um a bad dream it just happened <laughs> and uh but but i know at the time it seemed like a very long um painful journey in the end yes which took uh well i mean it was over two seasons and even then it was at the very very end of the last season it got so frustrating in the end because right. you get so close and um I was living in Wales at the time, and then uh, we moved away at the end of the summer, and I still hadn't done it. So, yeah, was that up to Chorley? Yeah, that's when I moved to Chorley. Yeah, because I was living in Wales in Llanberis uh, in 95, 96, and then uh, we went to Chorley, myself and a uh, girlfriend at the time, and, uh, and then I was kept on going back to Pentrum whenever the tides were right, the conditions were right, uh, trying to find somebody to climb with. And then I was just going back uh, for the day quite regularly in the car just to go and try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Became, it became desperate, not just, just, not just from the climbing point of view, but from the organisation point yes. of view, trying to get over there, have the tides in good, good, uh, in the right conditions, plus uh, plus weather, and find somebody to climb with. It wanted to climb at Pentry. And it obviously gets pretty greasy at times as well, which is hard to. Totally, uh... it's so so dependent. Uh, it changes. It, it changes so much. Yeah. Not the best place to choose a project with hindsight, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. There's a lot of complications with low Pentry, and it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, you need to live there, and, uh, and then you can just pop down and. Certainly, if you're going to spend a lot of time on a project. Well, that seemed to be like Emma's main motivation, that it was local and she got involved, I think. But uh, yeah. it's quite interesting, the contrast between her and James, because reading his blog, he was quite interested in the history. And I think he must have bumped into you back in the day as well. Um, yeah. and, and he was like sort of fired up by that history. But for Emma, it, it didn't seem to be 
it was just about it was just about the route really wasn't it so i mean it's different people have different motivations i guess yeah yeah i i, I certainly didn't come out in the video uh and were talking about well, you haven't mentioned the, the once past. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not sure there was even any mention yet. Uh, well, perhaps, perhaps we'll get this bit cut into it for the for the future. Uh, yeah. If Dave Petz is watching. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, yeah. So uh, for just rewind a bit. So you 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 kind of got into LPT after you know the 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 circus had moved on really. Um, so like Moffat and Moon and everybody else, yeah. and it seemed like you were just sort of. Well, you were local and you're sort of doing some fillers in and you sort of ticked off everything um yeah yeah i mean uh, your I, own I, I grew i grew up right next to Trim traumatic um but at 18 i left went and did my studies and stuff and then uh and then it was only in uh, when i was 24 94 i think i mean i was always going back to wales because my family's there i was always climbing in wales doing a lot uh, Pentruin, I knew, uh, climbed up quite a lot, but um, but at the time I never had uh, the, the wasn't climbing at that level up until uh, until I gave up work and then in '94 went back. Yes, '95 when we went back to Wales, and uh, and there yeah just uh, gradually uh, started filling in a lot of the blanks. Yeah. Um, a lot of the lines had already been prepared one way or another, been looked at as well. Okay. Um, I think for new routing, I was always fairly lazy. I could never be bothered to uh, to uh, start a completely new project and right. clean and bolt. But there was, well, there were so many lines left. Okay. Which had was, been was, it, was Infanticide already uh, bolted then when you went on it? Uh, infanticide was completely bolted, yes. Uh, I think Steve Mayers had probably thought about it, but I mean, I mean, Jerry Moffat had originally looked at the line of Big Bang. Okay. There were, there were even a few bolts in it. Uh, there were really old, nasty troll bolts or something like that, I think, at the top anyway. Hey, don't slag off your old sponsor. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, true. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they were the... They were the uh, first I know what you're bolt. saying. <laughs> uh, things have developed uh, and, uh, yeah. So um, uh, infanticide. I think I think Steve Mayers, when when there was the North Wales uh, Bolt uh, Fund, uh, where they went round and completely uh, um, rebolted everywhere, they took a compressor I, I think, down, didn't they, or something? Sorry, they didn't they take a compressor or something down? Oh, I think I think they probably had a uh, yeah, uh, probably a generator and then electric yeah, filter drills or something like that. Yeah, they they were well quit out. There was, a, there was a bolt fund uh, put in place and they got a load of money and then uh, and then they went round and uh, you know almost in an industrial fas fashion bolted and put in the new resin bolts it was, it was great and uh, somebody somebody had um, put in a few bolts on the lower section from what i remember so infanticide because infanticide basically goes up being bang and then you hop across and join into euthanasia i think it is yeah and do the top part of euthanasia and so you were just linking uh, i didn't don't think i put a single bolt in for to do to do uh, infanticide okay so um you did liquid amber as well yeah no no okay because i was a bit unclear about that no i think i think there's a i think i've seen a lot of comments where people are unsure whether i did liquid amber and what's the other one sea of tranquility okay i never did either of them oh. i went on them yeah, but yeah. I never did either of them. Right. So how come you didn't get stuck into that as you did into sort of Big Bang? Well, I uh, at the time I, I I was keen to do Liquid Amber, went on it, and uh, I can't remember there was there was uh, there was some moves low down where it was really greasy and uh, I just couldn't get anywhere to begin with, and in the end I just thought uh, rather than uh, end up having to spend a lot of time. To repeat a route when there's mm -hmm. a new line just to the right i thought well i'll spend my time on a new project how, how do they compare difficulty wise infanticide and liquid amber uh, it's, it's hard to say because infanticide is so uh, i mean li liquid amber is so different it's a very different type of route i think uh you know you got hard moves right from the start big power power moves from what i remember but yeah, that's um, got bumped up to 80 plus in the new guide ah okay 
it, it wouldn't surprise me because I, I remember thinking quite that it was quite quite hard. Same with Sea of Tranquility as well. Um, but but in the end, I just thought that I, I, I could see a way of doing all the moves on um, Big Bang. And, and I think it was more my style as well, Big Bang, because the crux where it gets really hard, it suddenly goes off. You're not on really steep ground. It starts going more vertical. And so I think it suited my, my climbing. So I thought I'd do that one. Rather yeah, than I got the impression that style didn't suit Ben when he had a dabble on it. No, no. I mean, um, I grew up on slate and traumatic. So uh, the big steep stuff was never my forte, really. So it was more technical and uh, especially tiny little holes and things like that, I think, at the time. You know, it was more my style. Right. So, yeah, yeah so um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, so you, you famously had a very hard winter of training in prep for Big Bang because you didn't do it in 95. No. Um, what did what what did that involve? Well, um, it's funny because we spent ninety five in Wales in Chambéris, but uh, my the girlfriend and wife now uh, she was doing a teacher training course over the winter, so we were in Leeds actually ninety five uh, ninety six the winter there, and um, down at the new Leeds Wall. I, uh, I worked out as various sequences on the bouldering wall, which represented the crux part of, um, of Big Bang. Okay. So, so I uh, trained uh, a lot. I, I can remember training or doing all sorts of things, but it's specifically training on these moves, which uh, emulated the, uh, the crux moves of, uh, of Big Bang. Yeah, there's a comment on UK bouldering about you doing monster traversing um at leeds wall as well so as if you were like doing more stamina than power yeah i, I was doing he's doing all sorts i was doing uh, a lot a lot of lots of endurance work as well i mean the, the endurance was never never really a problem i always uh, seemed i seen that i think that part of the climbing was was more was more natural to me the the endurance part um but i had to, I had to really uh, get that, that that those type of movements the moves really, uh, really wired. So I, I remember spending a lot of time really straining specifically on, on that sequence. Right, right, right. Obviously paid off in the end, but it was, yeah. still, but it was still like a bit of a head game at the end. It's, I read that you took a yeah. month, you, you could not climb for a month afterwards or something. No, I, I mean, uh, when I finally did it, I, it wasn't really a big celebration. <laughs> not initially anyway. Yeah. It's, it's the relief. Uh, it's just a case of right. I don't want to come back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I want to strip the route straight away. Get off the crag. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough. And I didn't. No, I didn't climb for a month. I didn't touch rock. Didn't touch anything for for a month. It was uh, yeah. It was a strange period actually. I completely lost motivation. Right. Completely. Yeah. 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 So just backtracking a bit. Um, pre Big Bang. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, so you grew up in traumatic and you, did, did, you, did your family climb apart from your brother or was it just you just started climbing with your brother, Dave? With my brother, yeah. yeah. My dad likes the mountains but just walking, not climbing at all. And it was, uh, it was especially my brother with, uh, he had a couple of friends who were quite keen. And there was a teacher at school actually who did, uh, did some outdoor pursuits um and uh and just started climbing a little bit through them and then we joined the local club, club so how Dringle. young were you when you started leading? uh 13 okay uh, Pretty 13, young well, 13 um and so we just started going with the the club but it they only went climbing probably every two weeks something like that um my sister oh yeah my sister she's, she's uh, about eight years eight nine years older she she had done a bit of climbing and i remember she'd given up by that time she was well into fell running and uh she gave us some of the bits of climbing gear that she had uh so it was like you know an old willen sit harness and um a few uh steel carabiners and things like this and bit by bit we built up our own uh, our own kit and right. um but it very really it really was desperate, the, the, the amount of kit that we had, you know, we probably had uh, 
five bits of protection, a couple of slings. <laughs> but we had one harness. So the other harness we used to make out of the slings. Oh, wow. And then we bought a second-hand climbing rope for five quid. That's somebody who was selling. Which not we quite found a clothesline, but not far off then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, which we found out that this, this, this climbing rope had been used for doing everything. It had been used for towing cars. and oh. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't matter. We had the kit, so then we were uh, we we could go out by ourselves. Yes. Or did you just hitch around, or did what did you? Well, we had go, we had. A, I mean, I, my parents' house is literally just below um, Craig uh, Guess Isle, so it's on the Tramadoc uh, Ridge. It's the last one highest up. You could walk from our house to that cliff. Okay. Uh, so we used to go there. There's bouldering as well. There's a load of bouldering uh, underneath. We used to go bouldering a lot at Craig I guess so. Okay. And then uh, we could jump on the bikes and go down to uh, Tramadoc. Oh, sounds two, idyllic. Two, two miles away. Yeah. Two miles away. So uh, we used to just jump on the bikes and go down to Tramadoc, even after school, go climbing. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but I mean, it was pretty desperate. The amount of kit we had was so, well, and the, and the quality of the kit. So we learn you don't fall off. I never fell off until look, my God knows I've been climbing for five years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Never fell fell, fell off. You, know. well, you didn't. You didn't wouldn't, I never trusted the kit. So. It's no wonder your endurance is good. Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Used to climb on uh, all these gnarly uh, traumatic uh, routes, uh, thinking that you must not fall off because your kit is so bad. <laughs> And uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So can you still I, can you still speak Welsh? I struggle. I can understand it uh, pretty much, but because of being in France, the problem is uh, that part of my brain which deals with the second language is just French now. I thought that but, was the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know sometimes when I try and speak uh, Welsh, it's just French that comes out. I'll, I'll, I'll put in the odd word of Welsh, but, but yeah. it's mainly French that comes out. So, so um, after A levels, you went to Birmingham to university, did you? Or? No, I went to Leeds. Okay. Did we, you were in Birmingham at one stage, though, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. That was uh, well. I went to Leeds for three years. Did my uh, did my uh, degree there, and then I started work in Manchester. That would be ninety one. Right. And I was in Manchester when the company had problems, and uh, rather than GC, be made it? redundant, yeah, it's GC uh, Alstom. They're called Alstom now. Neuroengineering, um, yeah? Yeah, 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 engineering. And then uh, they, in the end, I transferred down to Birmingham. So that would be about, in the end, that was probably about 93, something like that. And that's where you picked up your nickname, was it? Niggs? No, no, that comes from uh, my sister. Oh, when really? I was little. That's from when I was six years old or something. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> How do yeah. you get that name then? Oh, I don't know. You'll have to ask my big sister. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. I just heard a different story, but I won't go into it because it's a bit uh, inappropriate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, so yeah, so I was just, you mentioned one of your, um, uh, one of the interviews or something that um, you took up, kind of first started bulk clipping on a trip down to France. Was that the trip that you went with Paul Reeve and Neil Bentley and your brother? No, no. Um, I think, Oh, Paul's 17. still got some photos from that, if you're interested. Ah, excellent, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were great trips, they were great trips. Um, I was 17. Dave, my brother, was 18. He'd started studying in Sheffield. And I remember I used to go over and stay with him sometimes, and we'd go off into the peak. And, uh, and, and it was there, though, where we started uh, climbing uh, bolt routes. And learning about and learnt about you know uh, red pointing and things like that because when we learned to climb we pretty much did it in our own little circle and we did it in our own style um, and then uh, then we discovered this world world of bolting and red pointing uh, so that's when my brother was at Sheffield and then when I was seventeen yeah uh, the summer there was myself Dave and another friend back from Wales. We went over to France in, in the summer and we went to Bukes. I mean, uh, cra crazy to go to Bukes in the summer. Yeah. But we didn't know any better. We went yeah. there and, uh, and, uh, and went around doing loads. I can't, 
yeah, we were climbing two weeks and virtually every single day we climbed. Maybe we took it a one rest day or something. Our fingers were burning, but we were doing like minimum of four routes a day. And what sort of grade sixes. were you climbing at that point? Uh, I was doing sixes. Uh, we, we did so many six Bs, six Cs at Bukes. Mind and you, I hard probably enough, did my first seven A's on that trip. I think we actually, I did my very first uh, seven A's on that trip. What is it? TCF, I expect. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was that one. Um, and then there was, um, we, we actually went on another one, which was given 7A plus. I think it's given 7B now. It's that classic one. I can't remember what it's called. Could be. You've got the big traverse. You do a big traverse and then you go up the head uh, right on the corner on the, uh, so on, towards the oh, right of the side. No man's land. Could be that one. Yeah, yeah, so it's just yeah, right a stick right. wall. Yeah, desperate. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, to the right of stick wall. Yeah, yeah. Went on. Never did it completely because it was too pumpy. Yeah. But uh, we we went on it and had good had a good go at uh, uh, doing that. I remember doing that on that trip as well, playing so, on it. Anyway. So, was sport climbing a, a revelation. This is like this is better than trad, or was it just a, a, another thing? I, I think I think for me, it, 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 the attraction was it's safe because. Um, on uh, trad routes, I just had this, you know, the, the, the psyche that you do not fall off, your gear is crap. Yeah. Um, and then on sport routes, you know, quite quickly, you, you, you realise that you can fall off. And, uh, and then it's a way of absolutely pushing yourself to the limit. So that's what I've, I found quite attractive with the, uh, with the bulk climbing, is you can, uh, you can push your limit. And your you grades suddenly rockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you cli- you probably climbing what E four E five when you were seventeen, were you? Or yeah, yeah. Um, God, roughly speaking, I can remember when I was sixteen, I did Vector, and that was the revelation. So that was like E two. Yeah. And then uh, I think when I was eighteen, what did I climb? I can't remember. Yeah, it's probably about E four E five. Right. Like yeah, yeah. Right. And seven A, seven A ish. Yeah. So, so when when did you? sort of start did you jack your job in to become a professional climber yeah yeah i mean what happened then was i went to leeds and studied and then um did a lot of climbing everywhere down i used to go down and stay with dave in sheffield and used to climb in whatever on the peak limestone peak grit uh started doing a bit of soloing as well and then climbing in yorkshire as well on, and that's where we discovered the limestone in Yorkshire. Um, yeah, grades went up, uh, up and up. And then um, when I left uni, yeah, it was about, yeah, it was uh, 2000, no, um, 91. Yeah, that's when I climbed 8A actually. So I'd left uni. Um, Which one? Sorry? Which one? Uh, rain dogs. Okay. In fact, I did it before. I think I was twenty. Yeah, it was after we'd uh, been on the the various road trips with uh, Paul Reeve, right? Neil Bentley and, and gang. Yeah, yeah, we've been on several trips actually with them. Yeah, and then we were going up to Malham regularly as well with with the Sheffield gang, uh, dossing in the barn and uh, and climbing nonstop. Yeah, and I think we did rain dogs when I was about twenty. I think I was twenty at the time. And um, yeah, because when, le- when I left uni in 91, that's when it went. Well, I'd, I'd had two weeks in the Alps actually doing um, a load of alpine climbing. Okay. And then went to the States for six weeks. That was good. Yeah. And then uh, then started a, started a real job uh, at the end of 91. And um, I was in that job until until I left. I went down to be ended up in Birmingham, but then I left in 94. It was actually 94, I remember. And that's when it became full time climber for three years. Right. And you're already were you already on the British team at that point or not? It happened at the same time. I I I, I did the trials for the British team in ninety four, I think it was, got into the team and then uh, took redundancy with work at the same time. Okay. Was that G C again or? Yeah, 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 G C in Birmingham. And and do you work for G C now or not? Yeah, I mean, it, it's evolved so much. It's, okay, it's, actually yeah. called, it's actually called Alstom now. Right. At the time, it was GC Alstom. So there's a merger between GC and a French company. Okay. But uh, the GC part they has left now, and it's purely a French company, and they call themselves Alstom. Yeah, right. and I still I work for them now here yeah. in France. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
so, so on so, and off. I mean, even though I left them, I left them for three years in a very roundabout way. And it was, it was, it was uh, quite coincidental that I ended up working for them again. Right, yeah. right. So, so yeah, so you, you joined the British team um, and you did pretty well there, didn't you? You became British champion, I think. Um, uh, yeah, not the first year, the second year. In fact, um, there was always Ian Vickers who was, uh, who was winning everything at the time. Of course. Um, in fact, yeah, I remember, because, I mean, that first, that first year in 94, so I was on the British team, gave up climbing, but I just decided that I was just going to climb outdoors, constantly climb outdoors, outdoors, and, uh, and that's where my grade just rocketed. And, uh, and then in the comps in the winter, uh, I think there were three comps, Ian Vickers won two and I won one, something like that. So I was probably second. And then uh, it was after I did Big Bang that um, I ended up winning the British Championships, yeah. That was at the foundry, wasn't it? Oh, fuck. There was a foundry comp, yeah, I think. Right. Right. And you won I, can't, I can't remember the... Uh, <laughs> there were quite a lot of comps. Um, yeah, there was, there was some very good foundry comps. I remember one with the stalactite, and that was classic. <laughs> so the, um, the, uh, you did about what, half a dozen international comps as well? Yeah, easily. No, I probably did about 10 to 15 in the end. Okay. How did you yeah. do in those? Um, I mean, there again, that first season uh, was, was probably the best I ever did in the comps because um, after going full time and then um, uh, going into the internationals, there was only a handful of internationals that season, I think, but I ended up making the semis, eight, getting about 12th or something from that one, 14th. And then Birmingham, there was the Birmingham comp that year as well, where I was in the semis. You know, I don't know, probably came about 15th or something in those. They ended up being about my best. I regularly used to get in semis, but the best positions I ever got were, 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 the, uh, were about 12th, 14th. Something like that. So how do you contrast, you know, the comp scene back then to how it is today? Did you follow the comps in, at all? I don't really follow the comps. I see the odd snippet. Um, I mean, it seems to have become uh, a lot more professional, I think, today. Um, yeah, I, I, I hear that. He, and certainly when you see any film with Adam Ondra, you know, he's got his own personal trainer. And, yeah. And uh, in, in, in our days, there was none of that. It was you, you go off and do what you think you should do. There was no, uh, no, there wasn't a coach or anything behind you. Um, and now it seems uh, to have really moved on to a very professional level, I think, the, the comps. Well, the style of settings changed totally as well. So I guess the, it, the type of climbing that you had indoors back then was more closer to outdoors than it is today, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. However, I'm, I, I noticed there is a bit of a change and you see it with climbing walls as well, well especially the bouldering walls, because you've got a lot of really good dedicated bouldering walls that have gone up. Um, probably, I, I don't know in Britain, I don't, but over here in France, I know there's even locally here, there's some bouldering walls, which are fantastic. And, and you know, the, rather than being just tiny little edges or holes now, it's, it's more about big modules big shapes, which in a way is representing, um, I, I know I see there's almost a trend to go where it's going back towards like sandstone, gritstone, uh, fountain work okay. kind yeah, of, yeah. Uh, the, the bouldering anyway. Even on the roofs, you see a lot of modules and things like that, which is quite good because it's a lot harder to, to, to read the roofs as well. Yeah, yeah. So you, it sounded like you really enjoyed the comp climbing at the time, is that right? Or did you feel you, needed to do it because you're trying to sort of shape yourself into being a professional climber. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, the, I, I, I felt that the comps were an essential, necessary part of, of, of trying, to, uh, trying to be a professional climber. I mean, um, it, it's, uh, yeah, the comps, it's really, I, I, in the early days, I had to go at competitions, but didn't really uh, get into it. Um, I got really pissed off, I think, 
I mean, I think we're pretty much my first comp was when they had a British Open, I think, at Birmingham, when they had the first Birmingham comp. Oh, the famous came, one. I came fourth in it, yeah. in the British Open, so uh, I was quite surprised. And then, uh, and then the next comps, they started the British comps and they had a competition at Foundry, I think it was. And I turned up for isolation five minutes late and they wouldn't let me in. And then I just thought, oh, I've had enough of comps, I can't be bothered, <laughs> can't be bothered with them. And I wasn't interested. And it was only after we did the, the trip with Paul Reeve. And Paul Reeve said, look, you must come and do the Foundry comp. And right. I think he said, look, I'll give you a free entry even. So I went, okay, fine. And then it's only from then that I carried on with the competitions and, uh, and ended up going for the British team as well. And, uh, so uh, com competitions were never, uh, never uh, in the early climbing, uh, something that I thought I, I'd end up doing. But once you ended up coming full time, you need trying to make a bit of money. It felt like, yeah, it's an essential part. And, and also it was fun to travel. It was great to travel. Um, you know, the, at the time there were there were comps opening up, and ended up going to Russia three times, I think, with the British team. It was great. Right. But, but but I mean, after after about three or four years of doing uh, internationals, it really became a, a drag. I found it's a okay. lot of wasted time, the travel, and you're sitting around a lot in hotels and in isolation, and everything. And yeah, towards the end, I mean, when I did Big Bang and everything. Well, after Big Bang, it, towards the end of the 90s there, I, I, I was, I was in a, it was an awkward situation because you felt, you felt compelled to do the comps, but I wasn't really motivated to do them. I wasn't that interested, but right. you felt like you had to. So yeah. in the end... Because uh, it was your job sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it became a real chore, but I didn't want to miss them. It was daft. Yeah, it's a crazy. I felt really, I really felt in a in a in a I don't know. Uh, really felt in a. I was looking for a way out in the end of the nineties. Right, that's and that's why I think coming to France was great. It was a way of just moving on. Was that a job offer for you or for your wife that led? It's for me. Yeah, right. it's for me. Right, because I think in 98, 90, 98 I went back to work. Um, initially, initially uh, cause we went to Chorley and then, um, you've got Alstom just up the road in Preston. And I, I went back as a subcontractor. I just went back for three months, earned a bit of money. But then three months became six months. And then, uh, then we bought a house. James, our first son came along and you think, mm, I need to be a little bit more serious about my life now. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so I ended up taking a full-time job and with the job, I ended up coming down here to the site, the Alstom site near in the Pyrenees, uh, just regular for a couple of trips. And, um, and then, uh, in 2000, they started a big international project here and they're looking for people to come in. So I put my name down and, uh, and got accepted. So I came here originally it was for two years. Right. Yeah. And, and did you, did you carry on climbing? Not that much. When it came out, uh, I didn't, I carried on a little bit. Nothing like I was doing, but there were so many other uh, distractions here. Because you got the Pyrenees on the doorstep. Skiing. So in the winter, uh, went off skiing, snowboarding, messing around in the snow. Uh, and even in the summer, uh, yeah, I did, did a fair bit of climbing, I think, the first couple of years. But, uh, but it always, wasn't always a priority. You know, you wanted to go out and see places. Because originally we thought we were here for two years, so we tried to do as much as we could in those first two years. Yeah, yeah. So, so have you had any returns to climbing at all, or any thoughts about it? Perhaps watching the Big Bang. <laughs> yeah, well, the, yeah. Because there's a few people that come back, like Steve Rhodes. You know, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he he pretty much gave up, and he's just got back into it. And a guy called Ian Bitcon, who is on the on the sort of um the comp side as well so yeah there's a few people return to it so you know what do you think? well i mean it's strange because what actually happened was um i can't remember probably about 2010 or something when james was about 10 11 he he was interested in taking up climbing so he joined a local club and uh and so i started climbing a bit then as well uh, and then it phased off a little bit. He lost a bit of interest, um, 
and then probably about five years ago, James, he was interested, and the second son as well, Louis, he started having an interest. So we all joined the local club and uh, started climbing. Uh, it was it's mainly orientated around the climbing wall in Tarb here, but there was also a lot of trips out to the, cl- to the crags and stuff. So I did, did start getting back into it quite a bit. And, um, but then, but then uh, James left for university, what, four years ago, three years ago. And uh, and so it sort of stopped again. But then, just recently, um, I don't know. I think the last year, I probably started doing a lot more. And um, even at work, there's a bunch who are quite keen, and we've got access to the climbing wall now uh, twice twice a week at uh, lunchtime. So we got when we got nothing better to do, you know, or twice a week down the local climbing wall. And, uh, and and what's what's quite strange at the moment is with the lockdown here in France, oh, yeah. I, I built a very small woody in the cellar ages ago, which I've hardly ever used. I mean, my son James, he used it quite a bit when he was keen. Right. But at the moment, James is back living with us. And so myself and James, at least twice a week, we're going on the woody at the moment. And and I've never I've never done anything like that for the last 20 years where you you, you regularly training and doing hard problems and so at the moment i'm probably stronger than i've ever been in the last 20 years <laughs> <laughs> so i'm quite keen to get back out and uh, see uh, have a go but the problem is time though right. it's just uh, very difficult at the moment right you got a pretty demanding job have you yeah yeah i got the job and then uh, we've 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 got uh, an, an old big house as well with a big garden which takes a lot of work as well okay Needs uh, takes a lot of time, so and then and then with the time that's left, uh, you have to fit everything else in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, there's you know there's so many. There's still you know you still got the mountains next door, and when there's snow in the winter, it's great to go up and play in the snow. And and then in the summer, I, I like to jump on the um, on the road bike as well for cycling. Go yeah, and go up in the mountains as well. Doing the stages and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I love going up and doing the coals and, uh, yeah. So, so is your brother still climbing, Dave? Uh, oh, John, no. Oh, yeah, John. if you, if you speak to him, uh, John Forward says hello. I think he climbed with him a lot when Dave was in Alfreton. Oh, yes, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, uh, he's not climbing, no, not at all. He, 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 he runs a bit, uh, but climbing, he's not done much at all since... I don't know, probably 95 or something like that. Yeah. So just, just sort of revisiting the time when you did Big Bang. Um, I mean, you were kind of like peripheral to sort of main sort of climbing centres, hubs like Sheffield. And well, you obviously did live in Lamberis as well. But um, it was kind of like you seen very much on the sort of fringes um, and probably didn't get the kind of exposure that you know, people like Jerry and Ben were able to yeah. by being in the sort of hub of things. Did, did, did that great? And you know, why didn't you sort of put yourself in the middle of, of it all? You know, because uh, it seems like you applied yourself to be a professional climber quite seriously, um, but didn't do that. Yeah, I, I, th- I think if circumstances were different, I probably would have uh, gone and uh, moved to Sheffield and uh, fitted in with the Sheffield scene. Because I mean, I was always on the peripheral of the Sheffield scene. More so, you know, uh, used to new uh, climb with quite a few, lot of people in Sheffield. Uh, spent a bit of time, you know, the weekends and things, uh, dossing on people's floor and going going climbing in and around Sheffield. But no, I was never in and living and breathing the Sheffield scene. Um, and and I, and I think you know, there's all there's all the personal situation as well, with my girlfriend, with the work as well. At the, at the time, it just never fitted in with doing that. And um, and I, I I don't know it it, it seemed, seemed fine for me uh, and, and and also I don't know um, I think there was always the 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 risk of the Sheffield scene of getting sucked in and and uh, getting bogged down and I I just like the freedom of going off and doing what you wanted to do and going climbing all over the place yeah it can um, be a bit of a bubble I guess. Yeah, 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 and 
Um, I, I think I think the lifestyle never completely appealed to me as well. Of the uh, the core climbers, where there uh, seem to be, um, you know, um, partying. It was a. It's not necessarily the party. <laughs> but it seems to be the dossing. The uh, <laughs> I've got. I've got to choose my words carefully. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 actually, actually I, what, people people are fessing up to that sort of thing these days. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, when when I, I watched that film that came out not that long ago, I think was it statement? Statement, statement. Yeah. yeah, and and there and there you could see uh, uh, all the little stories about the living in uh, in, in Sheffield, where it, that 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 part of part of it really didn't interest me whatsoever. No, it was crazy at Bukes, from what I understand. You know, the yeah. little supermarkets and stuff. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah, really. yeah, yeah. So, um, um, yes, I stayed on the outside, but but it, it is true because I, I can remember when I did, did various routes. Um, you know, you know, you think, you hey, know, I've just done uh, this route, and then it's just a, a little snippet. Is like on a, it wouldn't even be front page news. It's, it's hidden third, fourth page in your magazine. Little snippet of the corner. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, uh, I, yeah, I mean, the climbing scene has always been a little bit. I mean that's the climbing in in Britain. It's it's uh, I don't know if it still is. It's it's, it's a little bit niche and uh, Speaking, people aren't necessarily interested in uh, in 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 people who are who are climbing hard, if you like. Because I mean at that time I just decided I even if my roots were always in truck climbing, climbing in Wales, wherever in the mountains, um, I decided just to go for the hard routes, climb hard. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see how far you could push your limit. Yeah. And uh, and it's and yeah, it did not people weren't massively interested. It wasn't the, the big news. Yeah, also, it, depend, that... it seemed to depend who you were as well, because you know you you get I don't know you, if if Ben Moon had just done a new problem on his bouldering wall, it would be front page news, and yet somebody does a brand new fantastic uh, super hard route on rock. And it's it, it's just bottom of the page. It really seemed like that. You need um, to work harder on your image. Have an image. Yeah, 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 or something. yeah. That that side of things didn't come natural to me. I mean, I'm I'm more of an introvert anyway. And and I, I know when I did become uh, full time, and 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 you, you get your sponsorship deals, which depend on uh, getting your photos and magazines and stuff. I it was a real ball ache for me to have yeah. to try and do things. Yeah, and think about shit, and you need to go and get some photos, and then try and um, hassle the magazines to convince them that, that, that they should print your photos and things like that. I really didn't like that part of it. No, it wasn't natural to me. Well, you're an engineer, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, trying to sell yourself, marketing. Uh, no, it was not my uh, not my forte at all. So. No, fair play to you. Yeah, so you you um when so you did um Big Bang. Obviously, you gave it nine A, which is like a massive kind of like throw throw a huge rock over the fence sort of thing. Um, I mean, what else was going on at the time? I mean, Ben had done Hubble and he was on his route at on North Buttress and um uh and yeah, I mean, it, it didn't get that much attention initially. Um, and I maybe because people weren't sure that it was that sort of grade until like Ben and Jerry went on it and said it was nails. Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, also, also, um, I think when I did it, uh, John Dunn did his, uh, his thing at Malham. Oh, Total Eclipse, of course, yeah. Yeah, which he put 9A, and everybody was more interested in that. Also, there was the controversy surrounding that, so it was a good story. So it was a good story in Malham, so that, that, that was the headlines. Yeah. And that's what got the front page and, and everything. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. still not been properly repeated either. No, no. I went on it actually. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah, yeah. I was after Jerry had been on it and uh, and I went on it. And um, I mean, there was just the one hard section. Just, yeah. all right, the roof, yeah, okay, it's hard, but it's not exceptional. But I, rem I, I remember there was, a, there was the, the blank section just to get up to the roof where there was all this controversy about uh, a hold and you can see where this hold had come off and it did seem just so logical the sequence would have been the logical sequence and without it 
they just didn't seem like impossible. Without that hold, which was missing, it just seemed like no, just, there's, nothing, there's nothing. I yeah. couldn't see how any way that you could possibly do it without without where this hold had, that had come off. Well, Andres climbed past it and it was wet above on the easy section, so he didn't finish it, but he effectively did it, from what I understand. Ah, and, OK, right. Yeah. And Steve, had a, Steve McClure had a play on it, but he couldn't reach. So this is it. yeah, but yeah, yeah. So there was that. There was Hubble, and yeah. So it was really kind of up there. Um, and then you had a few interviews and sort of a bit more publicity when it perhaps became a bit more credible. Yeah, I guess. yeah, yeah. I think it was very gradual. Yeah, it was quite gradual. Um, yeah, because people probably uh, took some time for to it to be uh, to settle in and get accepted. Because I mean, at the time, you know, nine A. Who knows what it is. Uh, I thought that route was really hard, desperate, it took me several years. Even when I did the eight season things, usually did them in about six or seven days of total working and, and climbing. And it wasn't established where the boundary was either, you know, no. uh, you know, so because there were so few of them and they were scattered all over the world. No, so, yeah. no, and uh, I, I did it. I didn't know, didn't know what, what grade it was and just thought, well, I don't, I don't want to undergrade it. Quite. I'll overgrade it if anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at least it gets people interested, and at yeah. least Ben and Jerry went and had a go on it, even if it didn't get repeated for twenty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That surprised you. It took so long to get repeated. Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah, I was quite surprised. Uh, but, but you know, there's not that many. Well, there weren't that many people operating in 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 that area really in, in Britain. I think only a dozen have climbed 9A or harder since, you know, I think yeah. things yeah. really like moved on a lot in that period and then, you know, perhaps sort of plateaued out or whatever. Uh, yeah. or, obviously things have moved on again now, but I mean, it was, it, it seemed like, you know, it took a generation for people to catch up or. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it'll get repeated a bit more now. And now there's, I, I get the impression there's a, there's, there's, a, there's sort of like a new generation, there's new people coming through where there's quite a lot of people operating in high, high grades now on the, on bolted routes anyway, in Britain. Well, the film should have given it a bit of exposure. So, uh, to say the least. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that'll ignite a bit of interest and, uh, you know, get a lot more, a lot more yeah. attention. Yeah. So just, just, just to sort of, sort of, um, wrap things up i guess um the other routes that you did around the time so you obviously would cover that you didn't do liquid amber so what was the actually the hard, hardest route that you'd done before big bang was it infanticide in fact or was it i did i did uh, a range of eight c's uh, infanticide there was um various stuff in um in yorkshire had you done I mean, progress I... before you'd done um yeah, uh, which was progress? No, no, not that one. Um, what's it called? True North. Okay. True North. Uh, there's that thing in the middle of Al Malum, the HC. There. Oh, Cry Freedom. There's Cry Freedom as well. I did Cry Freedom. I did Cry Freedom really early on, in 94, actually, okay. when it was 8B eight, eight plus at the time. But I remember yeah. thinking that was really hard. I thought it was hard because I was short. But, um, but yeah, I see it's given 8C now, I think, Cry Freedom. There's a thing in the middle of Malum as well. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, anyway. But I did about three, three, three eight C's, something like that. Right. And then went with uh, Big Bang. Right. So apart from Big Bang, was your, was your hardest route um, progress? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Though, well, I, I wouldn't like to say which one was harder. In fact, or, or, or the low Travis at Craigie Longridge. I mean, there was the low Travis at Craigie Longridge. <laughs> <laughs> was that did you do that first or in Vickers? I thought it was me. Oh right, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I actually went there with Ian at the time when we were looking at it. And then uh then I carried on and, and ended up doing it, yeah. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah that, that was that was the uh, that was that, yeah, it was desperate that was. Um no but the thing with uh Big Bang as well is uh, I'd already done infanticide, so the bottom half of it it was uh, knew off by heart. Yeah. Um, so it's just adding the extra bit at the top. Oh, I've got a really obscure bit of question here. Um, you did 
um, a, a route at Cayley um, called Black Something or Another Indirect, a sort of, well, it gets a problem grade now at 7B+. plus. Do you remember that, so, a, a crimpy wall? Jesus, I didn't think that I ever got recognised. Yeah. yeah. Some, some, well, yeah, this is pretty obscure. But um, apparently, did you consider going direct on it, was what somebody asked? Or was it too highball? No, no, I never considered going direct. No, no. Um, geez, that's that brings back memories. Crikey, that was ages ago. Yeah. Uh, from what I remember, it was, it was pretty much uh, uh, linked into the top of, I can't remember what it is, Psycho or something like that. Um. Yeah, I did look earlier, but I've forgotten. Um, <laughs> I don't know yeah, yeah, that, that, I'm really dragging, uh, really yeah. going through the, the the archives in my did, brain. Did you have pads then at all or not? No. No, no. Okay. no. Right, right. No, no, it, it, it's strange bouldering actually, how um, how it ended up developing as a sport. And now people take crush pads and, and all the rest of it. And, um, and I've always done a lot of bouldering, but... Mm. Bouldering was always just something that you did as I don't know, as training or whether uh, not really a sport in itself. Right. Did, 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 was there any particular hard block problems that you did that you, it's worth mentioning about? No, no, I never really uh, went went for hard stuff. But bouldering for me was always just training, and uh, usually it was always about going out and doing loads, load a lot of mileage, doing lots of problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never concentrated on doing hard boulder problems. Don't think I ever did. I mean, I've ended up doing a few things. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's some stuff like, uh, but it was more. It was more the uh, the, the or, or, almost like the the like roots. I mean, there's the craggy long bridge, obviously, but um, the uh, like what do they call it? The power band and stuff like that in the peak. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, very stuff like that. Yeah, Tra traversing mainly then. Yeah, 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 quite yeah. a lot of traversing. Yeah, but hard bouldering, no. But um, it is strange, yeah, because uh, I, I find now not having much time. But when you do get a few couple of hours or something like that, but bouldering is the perfect activity. I think it's great. You just get your climbing boots and just go up and boulder. But there's so little here to boulder in in the where I live. Um, if you had somewhere that, that you could boulder, I'm sure I'd do a, a lot more. Cool. Because it's quite enjoyable. I like I, climbing. You know, it's it's a lot of faff. I find with all the ropes and stuff, and you need you need you need a day to go climbing. Really, bouldering is just so practical. Just uh, go off, take your crash pad, take a pair of well. For for me, it's more about take your boots, chalk bag, and you can climb. <laughs> Cool. I think I've pretty much sort of covered everything. Um, so, yeah, it's good to catch up with you again. And, uh, you know, appreciate yeah. you sort of taking the time out to um, to um, to to yeah. do it. I don't know if there's anything you want to say to anybody out there. that Because I don't think you've maintained your contacts, did you, with people particularly? No, very, very few. There's a yeah. few people in Wales, that's all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I, th I think it... it, it it's just uh, life just ended up moving on. Yeah. For, for me, uh, came out to France. There's obviously 